Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to focus on the workflow for assigning a single plate connection template to a beam splice and a column splice joint in RAM connection standalone for the purposes of resisting a shear reaction. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. Where we'll be focusing on our beam splice and column splice joints. For this exercise, we are going to be assigning a single plate splice connection to both a beam splice and a column splice. Now this type of splice connection can resist shear forces. To start, we're gonna go ahead and select joint number eight in the sample model. This will be a beam splice with a shear reaction imposed upon it. To start the design process, we'll select the design tab, then find our assign icon. Now a single plate shear connection will be available in both a basic and smart connection workflow. What we're also going to notice now that we've selected a splice joint is that the program has automatically filtered on the splice area and it's revealed the types of connections that are available for beam splices and the types of forces they resist. Again, we can use a SP single plate for both a basic and a smart connection workflow. Let's go ahead and select the basic connection workflow and highlight the BS beam splice SP template single plate. Then we'll click on the assign icon. Here we can see that a shear connection was assigned to this beam splice. So let's go ahead and click close. Once we've assigned a connection, we can go ahead and review the connection information through the connection pad. The connection pad can be accessed from the design tab in the ribbon toolbar under the edit icon. Since it is a shear connection, we're going to edit the shear connection. Now within the connection pad, we'll be able to see a variety of parameters that we can customize for our connection design. Here we can see that we can customize the plate information, including the position on the beam and we can also customize how it is connected. Here you can see that the default is a bolted connection, but you can also switch this to a welded connection if you prefer. In addition to that, we can also review our full connection results and calculations by clicking on the results icon, and we can also review a DXF view of this connection. At this point, since I'm not going to make any changes, let's go ahead and close out of the connection pad. As we can see in the joint selection area, the single plate shear connection that the program determined through the connection process passed all code checks without any errors or warnings. Now this type of shear connection is also available for a column splice. So let's go ahead and select joint number nine and assign a single plate here. To start that process, let's go ahead and click on the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Assign icon. Now the program has understanding that I currently have a column splice selected, so it's gone ahead and applied the appropriate filters. As we can see for the single plate column splice connection, this is only available through a basic connection workflow. So let's go ahead and select the appropriate template and click on the Assign button. Once the connection process is finished, let's go ahead and click Close. Now in the joint selection area, we'll be able to see the status of the connection design. For this particular connection, we can see that our interaction ratio is less than 1.0, meaning that it did pass all code check requirements. 
This interaction ratio, however, is indicated in yellow, meaning that a warning was encountered through the design process. To go ahead and review the information and make any changes as needed, we can go to the edit icon and then edit our shear connection through the connection pad. Now for this particular exercise, I can see pretty clearly why I received a warning. It's because my plate geometry doesn't exactly fit on my uh, column splice. For more information, however, if it wasn't completely apparent, you can click on the results icon and you'll be able to see exactly which checks issued a warning. So here we can see that the connector does not fit on the column. So let's go ahead and close. Now to change that process, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the parameters. I'm going to go ahead and spin this around and we'll see what the default geometry looks like. Now for this exercise, let's go ahead and go with a double plate. What that's going to do is it's going to add a plate on both sides of this connection. In addition to that, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my bolting geometry. Now the size of the plate is always going to be determined by the spacing and edge distance of the bolts that you have currently selected. So what I'm going to do is I can see that I have one row of bolts on the top and bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to two rows and you can see it's going to add an additional row there. Now I'm hoping with this additional row of bolts that I could possibly reduce the bolt columns. What this will do is it'll shrink that plate size down for me. So I've gone ahead and done that and it looks like my warning is probably going away because I can now fit this connection on this column splice but now my interaction ratio is greater than 1.0. Now to get more information on why this connection failed let's go ahead and click on the results icon again. Now whenever you make any changes in the connection pad the steel connection report will be updated for the current status of the connection. That'll be the current parameters you have assigned. So here I can see all my warnings did successfully go away, but now I can see that I have some flexural rupture in the plate. Here we can see I'm exceeding the capacity by 4%. So let's go ahead and close out of the connection pad and let's try to make some changes to our bolting. Here instead of a 7 8 inch diameter bolt, I'm going to prefer a 3 quarter inch diameter bolt. Now when I make that change, again, the interaction ratio is going to be automatically updated for whatever I've currently assigned to this joint. I can see that my interaction ratio went down below 1.0 and it is in green, meaning that I don't have any errors or warnings that are produced by this connection design anymore. Now if I'm finished making my changes, I can go ahead and click the save icon. What this will do is it'll save all that information that I just specified, including the bolt arrangement and the bolt sizes to this particular joint and connection design. I'll go ahead and close out of there and I can see that my interaction ratio in my joint selection area has been updated to reveal the status of the new connection design. At this point, this concludes our process for assigning a single plate shear connection to both a beam splice and column splice joint in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.